All right. Welcome to the Bellingham Whatcom County League of Women Voters primary candidate interviews. The League is a nonpartisan organization and we never support or oppose a party or a candidate. My name is Rebecca Johnson and my guest is Edwin Stickle, who's running for the office of U.S. House of Representatives 2nd Congressional District. The primary seat, this primary season, we're asking all the candidates for this office the same three questions. Each question has two minutes. Each candidate, excuse me, has two minutes to answer each question and the answers are timed. This video of candidate Stickle's responses will remain on our website until after the elections on August 6, 2024. Candidate Stickle, thank you very much for agreeing to this interview and for seeking to serve in public office. Our first question is, what should voters know about you that differentiates you from the other candidates? Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity to answer these questions. I've been a family doctor here in Skagit County for 27 years, dealing with health insurance and Medicare for all those years, um, accumulating many frustrations with the way the system works. So what's important to me, besides all the usual things you'll hear about uh, on the political scene, is Medicare reform. So I have a uh, medical degree. I'm a family doctor, and I have a lot of experience both in the hospitals and on the outpatient side. Um, and I uh, see a lot of uh, waste. I see a lot of uh, strange uh, uh, rules and regulations that affect uh, what we do as physicians and what patients experience in the office and at home. That's the message I uh, give to people when I'm doorbelling. Um, and it seems to resonate. There's a lot of uh, absence of discussion of this issue. Our current congressman uh, does many things, but uh, addressing this issue is not one thing I hear. And in Congress as a whole, I don't hear this talked about. So um, I come from a background of medical care. And, uh, and so this is very important to me and to my colleagues and to all my patients who struggle to get their care uh, at the speed that they need it and from the nurse practitioner or PA or doctor who knows them the best. Uh, there's many other issues that I've discussed with voters um, and uh, most of those I'm still learning more about, but this one I can confidently say is my main issue. Okay, great. So the next question, of course, <laughs> is um, our, ne our second question is, if elected, what are the most important and compelling issues you hope to work on? So the uh, most compelling issue is to incrementally uh, work with, uh, is to work incrementally to, um, change issues uh, that uh, Medicare um, imposes on people. I think it's very important to realize that Congress is the um, supervisor of all the bureaucracies and specifically of Medicare. And I think they've uh, let the bureaucrats uh, run, uh, run wild. Um, and so we have a lot of irrational things that we have to deal with. Uh, my impression is that they spend uh, three dollars to save two dollars uh, in general uh, trying to save money for Medicare and uh, that money uh, could be best spent on patients on actual patient care so uh, there's a lot of people in Congress who uh, can relate to that uh, it's not being talked about openly very much everyone's preoccupied with other things and I'd like to bring some of the focus back to um, health insurance reform and Medicare reform um, I can tell you specifics. Medicare starts at age 65, but you can retire at age 62. And so there's a three-year gap that I think uh, uh, needs to be closed. Uh, th there's some th things that we can, we can work on changing that will um, occur sooner than others. And that's one of those. Uh, I've seen patients um, of mine get sick and die of cancer get sick and have heart attacks during those three years as they're trying to avoid medical care. Um, there's other 
even larger issues with Medicare that I'd like to uh, bring up at Congress and uh, by law um, change with, with uh, Medicare regulations since uh, that's ultimately the law of the land. Great, thank you. And our final question for you uh, this evening is, polls show that Americans are frustrated with gridlock in government. Tell us about an experience where you effectively worked with someone with a different approach, different values, or different goals. Uh, one, of, one of my leadership experiences has been as uh, something called the chief of staff at Skagit Valley Hospital in Mount Vernon. I've done that for two different terms, a total of five years. And so there's a lot of uh, working between different specialties of physicians and working for different patients who have issues with other doctors and issues between doctors. So uh, working to find common ground, um, working with staff members whose specialty is, is uh, uh, knowing the rules and regulations, uh, providing the physician leadership at meetings and, uh, and then the biggest thing is working with physicians, uh, physician assistants and nurse practitioners who have uh, behavioral issues and uh, coming up with plans and programs for them to uh, continue working and change their behavior so that the patients and the other physicians and the staff they work with are able to work with them. So that's a, 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 a strenuous and a very intense job. Um, the last time I did it, I did it uh, thinking uh, I would uh, use it as a, a way of deciding whether working at a higher level, such as Congress, would be something that my personality could handle. And um, it came out the other end of COVID, uh, having gone through a lot, uh, both personally taking care of patients in the hospital and in the office, and then working with other physicians under the stress they did to handle COVID. So it's been uh, a, a long haul. We lost many uh, uh, people, and it's uh, nice to see that fading into the past. Thank you. Okay. So, so I, have, I have a question. There's a big bar across my face on my on my side. Is do you see that big bar? No, it will okay. not. Should not be there. Yeah, it should not be there. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close by saying once again, thank you for um, giving the public this insight into your views and values. Viewers, please don't forget to vote by August 6th. Ballots, ballots that are sent in by the mail have to be postmarked by that date and ballots placed in the drop boxes must be submitted by 8 p.m. that day. For more information, please contact or please see the website votewa.gov. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Stickle, candidate Stickle, appreciate your time. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for the, thank you to the League of Women Voters. Thank you.